Let's make this psychedelic looking animation that you see in the background of my screen here. In this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you the easy, simple way to use feedback so that you can create animations just like this. By the way, I'm gonna make this project file downloadable. Just look in the description of this video to download the project file that you are looking at right now. I'm gonna start a new project so that we can get started. We have our new project here, we have a empty canvas or empty grid here. I deleted the default operators that appear when you create a new project. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do on our empty grid is go over to the palette. And if you don't have the palette open, you can click on this button right here to open the palette. Once you have that palette open, you just wanna scroll down until you find Particles GPU. And then from Particles GPU, you wanna click on that, drag it and drop it in the grid area right there, just like that. And from here, we just want to create a null operator. So I'm going to hover over the two purple squares at the end of Particles GPU. I'm going to right click on those and then I am going to zoom out and I'm going to go to null under top. So we're already in top and I'm just going to click on null. I'm going to place that just to the right of Particles GPU. So we have our null operator placed. At this point, I'm just gonna make a little bit more room between particles and null. So this null operator is gonna serve as the start point for our feedback loop. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. Let's just add a comp operator after null to basically serve as the end point for our feedback loop. And then we're gonna create the actual feedback. So go ahead and right click on the end of null to open the OP create dialog. And then we are going to click on composite. We're just gonna add composite somewhere to the right of null, give it some space. And you should have something that looks kind of like this. We have null and comp connected to each other. And now we're going to add the actual feedback. Let's just go ahead and double click on the empty grid area near null. And then from the OP create dialog, we're just going to click on feedback which is right here in the top category. There is feedback right there. So click on feedback, and then I'm gonna place the feedback operator somewhere above and to the right of null. And now I am going to connect null to feedback. So just go ahead and click on the end of null, connect that to feedback just like this. And now we need to connect feedback to comp. So we have feedback, we're just going to connect feedback to comp just like this. And now you can see our comp is behaving a little bit differently. I'm gonna click on the display button to show that in the back of our screen in the background. Okay, so we placed our feedback, but we aren't really seeing anything too interesting happening yet. There's one last thing we have to do to complete this feedback loop. We need to drag comp and drop it onto feedback. So I'm just gonna drag comp, drop it onto feedback, Okay, so now our feedback loop is completed. Everything is connected. We dropped comp onto feedback, but we still don't see anything interesting. Let's go ahead and change something on the comp operator. We're going to go to the parameters of the comp operator to where you see this word operation. And we're just gonna change this operation to something else such as add. And now you can see that we're actually seeing something interesting on our screen here. So let's go ahead and change that back to multiply so that we're not blinded by the output here. And I'm gonna add an operator right after feedback that's gonna make that a lot more enjoyable for us. So what we're gonna do is hover over the line connecting feedback to comp, and we're gonna right click on that line, and we're gonna click insert operator, and we're going to click on level. So we have level under top here, and we're gonna click on level. We're gonna place that just to the right of feedback. We're gonna zoom out and with level selected, I'm just going to go to the parameters of level. And then in the parameters of level, so you see the tab that says post, we're gonna go up to post, click on post, and then we see opacity. And that's what I want to change from one to about 0 0.95, roughly. So I'm gonna zoom out, and then we're gonna click on comp and change that operation back to add. And you can see that once again, it is feeding back, but we don't have 
quite crazy as uh, blinding uh, visual effects coming in the background here. And this is the basic idea of what we want to accomplish here. We have our feedback loop is operating properly. And at this point, you can just make uh, whatever modifications you want. One thing that I like to do is check out all of the operations under the comp operator because if you click on that drop down menu under operation, you can see we have at least 20 different ways to composite the feedback loop onto itself. And one thing you can do is you can click on a different uh, operation to check that out. And then you can also click the button that says swap operation order. And usually you can click on preview grid. So let's click on preview grid, give you an idea of what all of the operations do under the operation drop down menu. Now for me today, this uh, for some reason, this preview grid toggle isn't working the way it usually does. It's not really showing me what I like to see. Um, but it just gives you a preview of each operation in the drop operation drop down menu. So you can get a quick idea if, if the second one on your screen looks good to you, then you can look for the second operation in the operation drop down menu. Click on that second operation and that'll give you what you saw in the preview grid. And like I said, you can click on swap operation order to get a different look. And that's pretty much it for a basic version of using feedback to enhance some, some moving content that you have in your structure here. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap of what we did. And by the way, I added these text notes that you can see as these text operators here, just to keep things organized. So first we are creating stuff using the particles GPU palette operator. And then we have that particles GPU operator linked to a null which is acting as kind of the start point for our feedback loop. And then from null, we're outputting into the feedback operator. And then from the feedback operator, we are changing the level so that the opacity is different when the feedback occurs. And then after the level operator, that is being output into the comp operator, along with the original output of the particles that we're creating. And last but not least, we dropped our comp operator onto the feedback operator to complete the feedback loop. So now that our feedback loop is finished, let's just go ahead and make some modifications to make this a little bit more interesting. So over by the particles GPU operator, I'm going to add a new operator. So I'm gonna double click in the grid area there. And then we're going to add a noise operator under top. Click on noise. So we click on noise, drop that somewhere near particles GPU. And then with noise selected, I am just going to click on the toggle switch for monochrome. And that's gonna change our noise from being black and white to being color. And then at this point, we're just going to basically combine our noise with our particles GPU. The way that we do that is using a comp or composite operator. On the line extending from particles GPU, I'm gonna hover over that line and then we're going to right click on that line, click insert operator and select composite under the top category. So we have composite. I'm gonna drop that somewhere in between particles GPU and null. And then at this point, we're going to drag from noise onto comp so that particles GPU and noise are being composited together or combined together. Let's connect noise to comp. And now you can see in the background that this colorful noise texture is being combined with our particles GPU to change the color. So now at this point, you could change the parameters of the noise operator if you want and change the period of that. Now let's make one more quick modification onto our particles GPU operator to make that a little bit more interesting. We're gonna put some wind on that particles GPU operator. So if you select particles GPU and look at the parameters for this and then click on forces, you'll see some parameters like wind. So this wind parameter makes things more interesting because we can just dial this up or down a little bit. And then you can see that the wind affects our particles. Now our particles are being blown by wind to the right, which is that X axis that I just modified from zero to 0 0.6. So now that we know that this X parameter changes our operator in this way, what I'm gonna do is zoom out and I'm gonna add a new operator above our particles GPU, double click on the empty area above particles GPU, 
we're going to click on the chop category, the green category, and then we're going to click on LFO. Near the bottom of that category, we have LFO. I'm going to click on that, drop that above our particles GPU. And then I'm going to look at the parameters for the LFO operator that we just added. And I'm going to change the amplitude to about 0.4, something like that. And I'm going to change our frequency to about 0.2, something like that. I'm going to click on the button on the LFO operator that says viewer active. So we just click on that little button on the right hand side there. And then I'm going to click on the particles GPU operator to select that so that we can see the parameters like that wind parameter that we were just changing because we're about to drop LFO onto that wind parameter. And it's important that you have that viewer active button clicked on the LFO operator so that when you hover over LFO, it shows that little chevron or kind of triangle shape. We have viewer active on our LFO and we have particles GPU selected so that the border is green and we see the parameters for that. And once those two things are clear, we can drag LFO onto that X parameter of wind so that that LFO is feeding that parameter of our particles GPU operator. Just like this, click on LFO to drag it and drop it onto that X parameter of our particles GPU operator. And then we just click on export chop. Now that LFO is controlling that wind parameter of our particles GPU. And if you look a little bit closely at the background animation here, you can see that the particles are not just being blown in one direction constantly. Now that wind is being modified by this LFO and you can just change the parameters of that LFO. For example, frequency of that LFO is a little bit too high to make a noticeable, enjoyable uh, change. So I'm going to drop that down to about 0.1 and then the direction of that wind will change more slowly to make a more even, more fluid movement, basically. One last thing I want to do is go to our particles GPU operator, and then in the parameters for that, I just wanna show you some things in the particles tab that you might use to modify this operator. And one thing you can do is change the particle size min and max. I like to change the particle size max to a little bit higher, maybe up to about 0.2-ish. And then you can see that it created more of an effect, more noticeable effect in our output. And at this point, we can add a background. Let's just scroll over to the last operator in our feedback loop. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to right click on the purple dots on our comp operator so that we can add an operator onto that. So I right click on those purple squares and then I'm going to add a null operator from the top category. So we click on null, drop that somewhere to the right of comp and then I'm going to right click on the purple squares of null. I'm just going to click on transform. So I'm just going to click on transform in the top category. I'm going to drop that somewhere to the right of the null operator that we just added. And then I'm going to zoom out to see the parameters of that transform operator. So we have our parameters of the transform operator here. The only thing I'm going to change is the toggle switch that says comp over background color. I'm going to turn that on. And then the background color, we have four boxes. That fourth box is the alpha value. So let's click on that and change that to two, one. And so now I'm going to turn off the view button for the comp and our background animation disappears. And I'm going to click on the view button or transform so that we can see our animation with that black background that we just added. And there we go. So yeah, it's not too bad of an animation for this simple operator structure that we have here. As you can see, it only takes about 10 operators to make this happen, but I think it's a pretty cool, easy way to do feedback. And I learned feedback by watching videos from Noto the Talking Ball on YouTube. So that's a great YouTube channel to check out for touch designer tutorials. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got some use out of it. I think this is a pretty good basic layout for or creating a feedback loop. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Check out the description to download this file that you're looking at right now if you just wanna quickly get started or follow along.